The Senate has urged the federal government to review the age limit for job seekers in the country. This was done in order to allow competent applicants to be employed by ministries, departments and agencies of the government. The call was in response to a motion by Ibrahim Gobir, representing Sokoto East, who noted that the recruitment requirement of MDAs and other private bodies, which set age barriers, indirectly excluded competent potential applicants from participating in the exercise. Joining us for a conversation on this, We'll be joined a little later by Biodun Shoumi, political analyst. But for now, we have Professor Adebayo Kolawole of the Federal University of Agriculture joining us. Thank you very much, Professor, for your time. Thank you. Let's start from the very basic. It's not uncommon to see job adverts stating candidates should not be more than 25, 30 or 35 years max. How welcome is this move by the Senate to review age limit uh, for employment I think uh, one should give kudos to the Senate for responding to a societal issue, the issue of age being used as a career in employment. But one them must worry that our Senate, in fact, the entire legislature seems to be in a hurry to do things. Um, ageism, that is the... Um, bias towards a certain particular age group in behavioral responses is not new. It's been around since 1969, and it's similar to racism or ethnicism or other kind of isms that there are. So it would have been better if Senate had called experts um, in terms of demography to advise them before they start talking of this kind of law. Because I know that countries that have used this kind of law have a problem with availability of labor or skilled manpowers, where majority of the population is getting old and getting out of job, either out of retirement or out of uh, just being old. And the population of younger people ready to replace them is lower. So they then bring out a law that says that you cannot use age as a barrier in an employment situation. So you have to look at it from a demand and supply situation. In Nigeria, what we have is we have few jobs and a large young population pursuing those jobs. So employers of labor use age as a criteria to reduce the number of people that will come for an interview, for instance. So I would think that Senate, if it had sought for expert opinion, should be looking at policies or laws that encourages job creation, creation of work opportunities, because that is what is missing. Not necessarily that people who are qualified are not being employed, but the jobs are just not there. All right. Um, I, I'm told we are now joined by Biodu Shawumi, a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Uh, straight up, one of the grounds put forward uh, for this uh, submission uh, is that the move would allow for more competent application. Does age translate to competence? Yeah, yeah. I think I think we need to get the issues um, right. In the first instance, what is the issue about? Is it about age discrimination? Is it about age barrier, you know, to access employment in Nigeria, which in any case is in existence? In the I think there was also mention of a, a, about a 13-year embargo that was placed uh, on employment by the federal government. That was factored in in the conversation. Yes, absolutely. What the federal government is, um, uh, is doing currently is that employment are restricted to certain um, ages in order to gain entry into employment. Um, but the fact of the matter is there are so many problems on the way. For instance, schools, you know, people finishing their degree so late, uh, not due to their fault, but because of strikes. Then you have the issue of um, not enough jobs being created in the economy, you know, opportunities for people. So how do you then you know, put um, restrictions on access to employment as due to tackle youth unemployment. 
rather than looking at creating more job opportunities for people. Because what happens is we have few jobs and so many people are chasing it. So we're trying to manage that situation, you know, through uh, moderating entrance into employment, you know, with federal government, you know, creating made barriers. But that does not solve the problem. Because at the end of the day, we are creating a situation where people are being penalized in their home country, uh, not due to their fault. But it's a failure of government policy. So what the National Assembly is trying to do will not necessarily address the problem, but will create a situation where they can relax the entry, you know, into entry requirements into federal employment. But that does not result into a solution to the problem. Yeah, so because like there, 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 the there are comments that people that might be qualified but have had little or no experience on the job might be, I mean, might be of negative impact than what is being sought. Is it just to give employment or is it truly qualified people? That was why I asked you, um, does age uh, translate to experience? No, age does not equate to experience. It is quite correct that there are so many people who may be out of jobs um, without the requisite experience in any business, but they are academically qualified. In Nigeria, we tend to focus more on academic qualifications, unlike in developed economies, we have a uh, focus on experience and what you are able to do. If you say you are a professional in a particular field, you'll be expected to demonstrate it, not necessarily through your qualifications, but demonstrate it practically. So, but when you look at the situation in Nigeria, we need to change our thinking into <coughs> ensuring that people are not only qualified academically, but they have the requisite experience and knowledge, you know, to uh, perform. But how do you fault people when they do not even have the opportunity to gain that experience in the first instance? All they right. don't because we do not create enough jobs, you know, to meet the job requirements of the graduates coming out of um, our institutions. Uh, let's let's and when you talk about it, yes. Okay, just complete your thought. I, I seem to have uh, interrupted you at some point there. Okay. All right, let's bring uh, Professor in. Will this move that's being made by the Senate address the issue of falsification of age for the purpose of meeting job requirements for employment as uh, envisaged by the sponsor? Thank you. Yes, I can yes, hear I can you. Hear. Uh, the question I, I put forward to you is uh, the issue of age falsification. Uh, there are those who are saying that um, that is a concern. Will this move address the issue of age falsification? When you go to some public uh, institution, you see people who say they are 40, they look more like 60. I don't, I don't think it will. As I was explaining earlier, you, you are using the, a, a wrong medicine for a particular ailment. Somebody says, I've got a fever, and you are giving the person a stomach upset medicine. In our economy, we do not have a situation where the number of jobs are many. And therefore, we want to create an opportunity for more members of society to be able to pursue those jobs. We don't just have the job. So uh, first, it will not uh, solve the problem of unemployment. Two, it will not uh, address the issue of falsification of age. Rather, it might even encourage it. Because what you then have is that the competition becomes so intense that people will now do whatever it takes to get the job. So you, on the one hand, say that we have very few jobs, and employers of labor, including the government itself, says that we use age as a barrier for the people we are going to take in. Now you say, OK, we are going to open it, and that therefore there will be more people pursuing that job that is not there. So in a demand and supply situation, what you then have is a situation where the competition for the existing job is higher than either two. And therefore, child practices will increase. For me, I think this is the kind of law that you will promulgate, and either people will not 
obey it, or it will just end up in the in the dustbin somewhere. It is a waste of valuable legislative time, as far as I'm concerned. I think they should be thinking more of laws that would enable jobs to be created. Such laws would be laws that ease the uh, that um, uh, reduces the pressure on people who wanted to create business, who wanted to form new businesses. Nigeria is one of the most difficult countries to start a formal business. The process of registration, they keep trying to make it easy. There are still people within the country that still continue to make it more difficult. Today, they say you can register your business online. If you try to register your business online and you go to CAC office to uh, follow up on the necessary payments deal, then they tell you that the application you did online is not valid, and somebody has to fill the paper application for you in that office. All right, Professor, so let's, let's go back to uh, Mr. Asho with me and get his perspective on your position. Uh, he doesn't think this is the, I mean, this is not yes. the way to go to address the issues. What do you, what's your reaction to what the professor had said? Yeah, we're just scratching the surface. I agree with him up to a point. What we need to address is what we call age qualification is basically age discrimination. That is what it is. You cannot say, you are not looking at my skills and my ability to do the job, but you are looking at my age to start with when you are shortlisting. And when you get fixated on age, people get disqualified. They won't have the opportunity, you know, to be properly assessed for the job. You know, and that is discrimination to start with. We need to, you know, abolish that. Okay. The, the second issue in relation to that is that we are not creating enough jobs. We need to face it. Rather than trying, you know, to, um, for instance, trying to get people, rationalize the few jobs available, what we need to do is, one, look at the ease of business, doing business in Nigeria, which is exactly what my colleague was talking about in terms of, um, the time it takes and the trouble it takes, you know, the bureaucracy involved in registering companies. The other issue is to look at our industrial policy. Do we have an industrial policy in the country? We depend not on the services industry, whereas government needs to invest heavily, you know, in the industrial sector with a view to create thousands and thousands of jobs. Then also we need to look at technology. How far have we been able to exploit technology you know, um, technological development to create jobs in our own country. If you get, just try and call the um, 24 hours contact line or customer services line of many banks. They are not based in Nigeria. Some of best, them are based in India, All right. in UK and elsewhere. So have we thought about developing, you know, our telecommunication technology with a view to ensure that some of those services are sourced are brought back into the country. All right, now, you've given us a lot jobs. to think about, um, but I'm afraid that that's the much time will permit us on the program uh, tonight. I will just say thank you very much uh, for joining us and sharing your thoughts, uh, Mr. Shoumi. No problem, thank you. All right, uh, Professor Kolawale, thank you as well for your time and your submission on the program. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, so we'll take our plots report now. Um, when we return after this break, I will give my take. Do stay with us. The Nigerian Senate has called on the federal government to direct the Federal Ministry of Labor and Productivity to set up a committee to review the age limit for job seekers in the country. The motion, which was raised on the floor of the Senate by Senator Ibrahim Gobir from Kebi State, wants competent applicants to be given the opportunity to vie for job vacancies in government ministries, departments, and agencies. Deeply concerned that the development where a person believes he is unemployable can lead them to embracing criminal activities and to further increase the growing crime rate and the insecurity in the country. The Senate therefore resolves to ask the federal government to direct the Federal Ministry of Labor and Productivity to set up a committee to review this age limit with a view to getting this problem of age barrier 
sorted out to allow the team and skilled and competent applicants to be employed by the MBAs and private sector. 14 or 14 years of embargo on employment to the age already uh, earmarked for employment so that the age will now be 23 plus 13 because it is the government on its own that plays embargo on employment. So there cannot be justification for you to place embargo on employment and then at the same time expect graduates to remain at the age at which they are during the period for the embargo. So I think in the review that has to be taken into account and therefore the age limit can now be raised in addition to the established 23 or whatever to add the additional years that government has placed embargo on employment. I agree with you completely. Not through a fault of theirs. People are discriminated. They will tell you only 30 years limit. Meanwhile, someone has, been, has graduated maybe 10 years ago. So this is a, a very good uh, uh, motion. And I'm um, urging the Federal Ministry of Labor and Productivity to swing into action immediately. To allow the teaming, skilled, and competent applicants to be employed by the MDS. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. That was again saying, eh, the eyes have it. Everyone is singing corruption songs. And the question that comes to my mind is, will we see the outcome of the much-promoted forensic audit ordered by President Muhammad Bukhari with all of these distractions? There are very valid doubts about it ever seen the light of day. The unfortunate reality is the fact that the NDDC stinks of high, very high corruption. It was conceived with good intentions, no doubt, but the mismanagement has destroyed the noble ideals of the initiators. It now looks more like a mistake that should never have been allowed to thrive. For all it was touted to be, it has not benefited the Niger Delta people, the sole purpose of its existence. The current interim management board has the huge question of how 50 billion naira grew wings out of the NDDC account since the beginning of this year to answer. There is also the allegation of payment of 16 billion naira to a company for doing nothing among other sundry issues. But what hope is there when the supervising Senate committee overseeing investigations is said to be fingered in the ongoing forensic audit? It is indeed glaring that issues are now being sacrificed on accusations and counter accusations left, right, and center. It was going to, I was actually going to end tonight with a call on the president to speak up. Well, he has. Is his statement enough for the redirection of the energy in a matter concerning the Niger Delta? We shall all see in the coming days. Many thanks, as always, for joining us on the program. Remember, your feedback is most welcome. Please find us on any of our social media handles at Plus TV Africa. You can also catch up on past episodes on our YouTube channel. Until I see you again, please be well. <laughs>